In a recent video, I took a look at this little oil atomizer, and as part of the package, it came with a classic car USB charger type power supply. And I thought, let's reverse engineer this as well. And it turned out to be really interesting. It's something that I've looked at before, but never quite realized the significance of the chip, which is very, very interesting. So I've taken some pictures so we can jump straight into the action here. And I shall zoom down this and focus down onto it so we can get a nice, good look at the circuitry. So on one side of it, we have, put that there, uh, the USB output socket for the device that's being charged. This is rated 700 milliamps. I wouldn't recommend going much higher. Definitely don't plug your super duper big expensive uh, iPhone or Android or tablet in because th this chip is notable for uh, an undesirable failure mode which could blow up your phone. However, there's a LED in the output uh, to indicate when the unit is powered, but that's actually on the 12 volt side. There's two capacitors and there's an inductor. This is the input capacitor, 12 volt in supply come in. This is the 5 volt output capacitor and this little inductor here is used to actually help it drop the voltage from 12 to 5 volts in a pulsed manner. Let me bring in the other side of the circuit board. We have the magic chip. Now this has got a Motorola number, MC34063. But the odd thing is it's manufactured by ON, but Texas Instruments also make them, and that's because this is a very, very old chip. In the same way that the 555 timer chip has a huge history, so is this. It's such a useful power supply chip with just a selection of building blocks like Lego that this dates back to 1983, and it's still going strong. It's still being manufactured and used in many products. So the incoming supply to the uh, circuit has this one ohm resistor which is used as a fuse and also it will help in limit inrush current. There's a provision on the circuit board for a mystery diode which basically goes between the positive and the negative connections. And that's presumably to suppress reverse voltage glitches that might happen due to strange uh, things like inductive loads being switched on the, um, on the car. Particularly when you're turning the ignition on, it's, it can result in quite spiky, glitchy power rails for a while. Uh, we've got the incoming capacitor here. We've got uh, the inductor and a diode that's used to increase the efficiency of this circuit greatly. Uh, we've got the 5 volt capacitor here. We've got the connector pins here. We've got a little timing capacitor for the chip and we've got a feedback uh, voltage divider that uh, gives a signal back to the chip to tell it when the output has reached 5 volts. And it's worth mentioning that by modifying these resistor values, you can adapt these little things to put out 3 volts or 9 volts or various voltages, not necessarily on a USB port right enough. Uh, other things, we've got a resistor here for the LED, and then we've got the a 0.22 ohm resistor, which is used for current sensing as part of the way the circuit operates. It's worth mentioning that these little programming resistors for the data pins that can set voltage levels aren't in place, and they've also drilled these holes very big, so the middle pins aren't used, which is good in a way, because... Um, this thing is a very low current device, and it's notable that this chip does not have thermal protection. One of its failure modes is that if you overload it to the point that it really gets baked, uh, I think modern chips do have some current limiting uh, facility, but it can go short circuit. And if it does that, you'll end up with 12 volts finding its way right through to the 5 volt side, which is not a good thing for your electronic stuff. Here is the schematic, and then I'll show you the building blocks of this unit because uh, it does have a, a very modular construction, which makes it, which is why it's still about, which is why it's still a famous little chip. I'm going to get closer. So here's the incoming supply. It's 12 volts. It can actually go up to 24 volts. And because this is a 35 volt, 22 microfarad capacitor, 24 volts is perfectly viable. This chip is capable of going up to, I think, a maximum about 40 volts, though I wouldn't really push it that far. We've got the 1 ohm resistor here, which has been used as the fuse and an inrush limiter. We've got the smoothing capacitor. We've got the 3K3 resistor in series the LED so it lights at fairly low current, um, just to indicate the unit's on. They've done it in the 12 volt side instead of the 5 volt side because it means that it's not taking away valuable regulated current available from that side. It's just better to use in the 12 volt side. There is the current sent resistor being switched through to the coil. And in operation, what this unit does 
is here's the output capacitor here. It switches the 12 volt rail very briefly down through that resistor uh, and through this inductor. The inductor will push back against the current flow as it tries to build up a magnetic field. And uh, when it's the field is risen up to a certain level, either I'm not sure if it's purely the timing capacitor times the on and off cycle or if it's purely cuts out on the overcurrent, but when it detects the current has re reached a certain level, as dictated by the magnetic field reaching the point that it just can't build up any more magnetic field to push back, the current, the voltage across this will be sensed to show that the current has reached a high level and then the circuit will turn off. Now, in the process of building the magnetic field in this inductor, it was trickle charging this capacitor. But now, because this end was positive and this end was negative, the magnetic field collapses and this end goes positive and this end goes negative and finds a path to charge that capacitor via this diode. So it doesn't just charge capacitor during the building up of the magnetic field when it's on, but also when it's collapsing and it makes it more efficient. And it does this in a series of pulses until the voltage at the output reaches a level that this potential divider will provide a feedback voltage of 1.2 volt. 1.25 volts is a threshold, and at that point it goes into standby until it sees the voltage drop, and then it boosts that capacitor up again. Um, that is it. So, bizarre. Motorola chip uh, manufactured by On and Texas Instruments just because of that strange history. Now, let me show you the block diagram of this, and you realise why it's so versatile. Because it's not just... Is this fitting in or do I have to zoom out a little bit? No, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. This isn't just a buck regulator. This can also be used as a boost regulator to boost the voltage up as well. Because inside it's not just a single purpose device. It's got these modules and it could potentially find other uses. So here is the 1.25 volt reference and it provides that to the op amp, uh, the comparator in this instance, which compares it to the voltage being measured by the potential divider across the output capacitor and when that reaches the 1.25 volts the output of this changes state and uh, toggles this um, uh, output driver on and off. The output driver is pulsed by the oscillator which has that timing capacitor but also has that current sensing circuit. Does it, if you, if it never reached that current sensing level, would it uh, automatically keep oscillating at a fixed frequency? Or does it basically use a capacitor as a timer to turn it on and then use the current sensing to turn it off? Not really sure. I should really look into that more. But there's the output stage with two transistors. I think they're, they're using the two transistors like this because of its versatility. It opens up the possibility to use it for other functions. And there, there, there's the uh, inductor limiting current to the capacitor, and uh, it's also got that little diode also going to the zero volt or ground rail, which uh, allows it to uh, take the energy both when this is being charged and also discharged. The magnetic field is being built and then collapsed. Very neat little circuit, very functional. It's nice when you find these old integrated circuits from the past, and they've got... Uh, such useful functionality from the time, like the 555. It, it's, it's a timer chip with building blocks and it is used extensively in modern products because it's just a useful little Lego chip. Well, in the same way that the 555 is a useful voltage threshold and timer chip, the MC34063, it turns out, is a really useful power supply chip and creeps into many, many applications. Just keep in mind, though, don't uh, try and charge expensive devices from these little tiny plug-in chargers. They are usually only rated for low current, which makes them perfect for charging head torches but that only need about 500 milliamp charge current, or devices like this that uh, squirt oil into the air of your car. Not sure why I'd want to do that. But um, as long as you keep the current low with these, it's absolutely fine. I would guess that uh, if you plugged an Android phone into it, it would do what many of them do, and it would gradually creep the current up from a low level until it saw the voltage drop, and then it would nudge back, so it probably wouldn't overload it in that sense, but it's not worth the risk. These are best kept only for powering small items. But there we go. What turned out as a simple teardown ended up being a bit of a history lesson in this uh, 1980, was it 1983 this chip came out? That's an amazing bit of history.